In the mid-1950s, the Duke of Edinburgh began taking a keen interest in the subject of UFOs. Fortunately for him, his personal equerry, Sir Peter Horsley, was also a high-ranking military man who had access to some remarkable contacts and astonished information. He was at one time investigating UFO reports in the main operations center at the Ministry of Defense um, as part of his duties. And he gave some of these reports to the Duke of Edinburgh. Knowing how the household works, if Prince Philip wanted some information, the natural chap to ask would have been his query. And so he may have said to uh, Peter Horsley, find out what you can about these UFOs, for heaven's sake. I keep reading about them, which he would then have done. He did have uh, an interest in this. I wouldn't say it was a consuming one or a permanent one, but he asked one or two questions, which, of course, got prominence really out of proportion to their actual worth, simply because he was the Duke of Edinburgh. Horsley, in his role as Deputy Chief of Strike Command, had his finger on the clear trigger. One day, a colleague by the name of General Martin telephoned him and asked him to go to the Chelsea home of a curious woman by the name of Mrs. Markham. She was playing host to Mr. Janus, a man who had something of the utmost importance that needed to be discussed with Horsley in person. Intrigued, he left the palace on a wet and misty night, taking a path that was to lead to an extraordinary encounter. As he thought it might have something to do with the royal family, he went. And he was sitting in this flat, which was apparently a well-furnished, quite nice flat and a good address, when in came a chap whom he'd never seen before in his life. He was uh, not by any means inquisitive, but he was a, a very keen, intelligent man. And he and Horsley had a very interesting talk. Their conversation covered UFOs and atomic warfare. He made it clear to Horsley that he knew a great deal of things which Horsley knew, but which were secret, perhaps even top secret. Janus's knowledge sent a shiver down Horsley's spine. He knew all Britain's nuclear secrets at that time. So obviously he found this very disturbing, and the first thing he did was to report it to Buckingham Palace when he went back to the palace. When the Duke heard about the case, the strange encounter was considered to be a security risk. Horsley was immediately dispatched to the house in Chelsea, to question Janus again. When he went back to the address, it had uh, become quite different, not at all what he'd seen on the night in question. The room had been vacated, apparently. There was, he could not find the person with whom he'd been at the meeting. And of course, the guy from elsewhere had disappeared as well. So it, was, it remained a mystery, but it was very disturbing for him. This was an astounding experience, related by a man whose integrity is beyond question. For Horsley, the most chilling aspect of the encounter was the feeling that Mr. Janus was reading his mind. This led the royal equerry to a startling conclusion. Horsley has said that the man was, no question about it, an alien. He believed implicitly that he'd had this encounter. I can assure you that he would not have recorded it if it were not so. By no means would he have made up such a story. He would have been frightened of being uh, ridiculed. Horsley later recounted the story in his autobiography, written shortly before his death, but the government file on the incident remains classified and unavailable to the public.